welcome to Live with Greg or Live with Greg, depending on semantics. <laughs> Another episode of Live with Greg. Painful as it may be. <laughs> Wasn't that your first Live with Greg episode? You were. We didn't say much. <laughs> no. I think the whole thing was like five minutes long. Yeah. And our whole thing was to not say anything for as long as we could. Because you had done that interview with Dr. Berkelhammer, and you guys both spaced out. And we thought, oh, wouldn't that be fun if, like, in a real interview, you asked a question, and then you both just don't say anything. <laughs> like, it just stays there. And then he didn't want to do it. Like, at first he was open to the idea, and then we went to Stacy's pet store. Uh, right. Dog bill. Right. And uh, I did it. That was cool. That was a lot of fun. It was fun. I was surprised at the reactions people had, like how they just read stuff into it. You know? <laughs> oh yeah, but, uh, I can't remember any particulars. I just remember people had all sorts of ideas of what we were doing, and like all we were doing is just <laughs> recording silence, right? Right, of course. <laughs> but it seemed like in doing that, it led it left a lot open to interpretation. Is there anything you want to start off with? Yeah. Um, how many years ago was that? This is my eighth season, so that was eight years eight ago. Eight years ago. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, well, my Huntington's has gotten uh, worse since then. Um, I've noticed I have uh, more movements, um, and I'm... Um, having a harder time walking right now. Um, my, uh, my, uh, my gait is uh, uh, impaired, I guess. you have hope for? Um, that's a good question. <sighs> well, I hope uh, that I can um, you know, wake up in the morning, I guess, and uh, be able to get through the days. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, you know, it's you know, it's still you know, um, I'm still able to do th some things. Um, like I can, like I not having problems. Like when I'm in the shower, I don't need a um, a bar, you know, to, I can, so I can still shower without having to worry about it. But I do notice, you know, that I uh, appear drunk. I guess um, so just being able to get through the day you know, as um, as uh, you know, free of symptoms as possible is, is my hope, I guess. Have you had anyone in public, like within the past few months, accuse you of being drunk or treat you as though you were drunk? Uh, no, I, I haven't. Um, but I do. Uh, I go out for walks uh, every day, pretty much for twenty minutes, um, and I'm sure people are, you know, thinking th something about me. I do, you know, occasionally, um, you know, get people's you know, looks, but I try to just, you know, uh, smile and uh, you know, just uh, be as, uh, you know, and, and greet. I, I try to greet most people, you know, when I go out and walks, and especially right now, you know, there's not many people uh, uh, out walking, so <laughs> there than there normally would be. Right. So, but I, but I'm not seeing a lot of uh, 
no, no. People accuse me of being drunk. Do your immediate neighbors know you have Huntington's? They do. Mm -hmm. uh, I told them. I told them uh, right around when we moved in, or when they moved in, um, because I was I was doing my fur on the greens. Remember? Yes. And uh, one of those was uh, I, I invited them to one, of them, so they they came out. So they totally know. Uh, and they they also know I'm on disability uh, for my Huntington's. Do you and Charlene have? conversations about being proactive like you mentioned the shower like is there any consideration of putting a bar in before you fall well we have to move now um, so uh, but I was thinking that you know um, the next place we move to we should get a, a bar installed just to be you know safe so she's um, um, she, you know, has noticed that, you know, my movements are worse. Um, but, you know, she just tries to, you know, uh, she's a, po a really positive person. You know. That's awesome. She's got a, a great uh, attitude and, you know, she knows it's not easy for me or for her, basically. Um, but, uh, yeah. Anyway. Um, so that's definitely something that we've talked about. I've known you to be an advocate for HD and wanting to be out in the world as a positive force, especially for people who do have HD. Is there anything you would tell someone with HD right now? Like, let's say someone who has the symptoms you had eight years ago. Like, positive advice, like knowing that they're heading towards where you're at. And you know, like part of what I'm wondering is how do you have hope? How do you have mental health? Um. Well, some days I don't have it. <laughs> some days, you know, it's really hard for me. Um, but, um, sorry. I'm spacing it. <laughs> 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 um, that was a callback. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, uh, about someone eight years ago. Like, what would you say to an individual who has the symptoms you had eight years ago? That would possibly, like, what have you learned in the past eight years that you think would be good advice for someone with HD? Um, make sure you um, take your meds. The, um, I've uh, there was a period where I, I wasn't on my meds at all, both uh, uh, for my depression and also for the movements. And um, I noticed that when I was um, off the, the meds for my movements, um, I was just, uh, choking more. And um, I was even having worse movements than I am right now. Um, and so, so basically, um, there's there's medication out there to help people. And also, uh, I'm on I'm depressed. So uh, I was off those medications and went got really depressed. Um, and uh, so, and I noticed that you know when I'm on those meds, they do work. Um, yeah, it was uh, basically a, um, a problem with my insurance, and that's why I, I lost it. So I was off it for a while. Do you have SSI as financial aid? 
uh, SSDI. SSDI? Mm -hmm. I did. Mm -hmm. Can they help with the housing situation? Um, well, basically, um, there's Section 8 housing, which I looked into, but here in, uh, in Alameda County, where I'm at, it's been closed for seven years. So, and they don't have any um, plans to open it up. So I was just assuming that, and, and I asked him about it. other counties, and they said, prob well, probably. So I don't. So basically, I I know that there's Section Eight housing out there, but it doesn't seem to be um, available to me where we are, where I live right now. Is there a representative with SSDI that you have who's like your? Oh. I mean like a social worker? Something like right, that. like someone who's personally in relationship with you to help you with aid available. Mm -hmm. No. That might be something to look into. Yeah. I know a couple people who um, are involved with the legal realm of aid for people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. I'll send out a couple emails. Okay, and just see. I appreciate that. I know from knowing you, like part of what I've learned with HD is it affects an individual's psychology and character, demeanor. Has Charlene mentioned anything about that to you, or has anything of that nature come up recently? Um, there was a, a period where I, I was getting really angry, and uh, I'm not sure. Um, um, but I kind of. Um, Noticed that you know, that was have it happening, and uh, I basically worked on uh, getting rid of it. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> because I that is something that is common with people. What in fact is disease? You know, um, they do. You know, um, they fly off the handle quite easily. I guess. Um, so for me, I've I've noticed that, um, but. I don't remember the last time it's happened, though, which is good, obviously. Yeah, it means your memory's horrible. <laughs> uh, what did you do to help heal um, the anger thing? I think I just started uh, when it was happening. Um, I just but it's going, well, where's that coming from? Um, and it was probably stemmed from um, you know, some stress probably in, in my life that was happening. So I probably tried to get rid of the stress. So what are you doing now to alleviate stress? Right now. <laughs> heroin. <laughs> ah, I completely forgot about heroin. Shit, but then they're all alone. The answer right in front of your face. I just need to go down to the uh, tender line and give us give you some heroin. Yeah, yeah. Um, are you aware of anything Charlene does in her life to keep her positivity or? positive frame of mind? Well, you know, especially right now because we're stressed out of having to move. Um, you know, it's been hard on, on her, you know, not knowing, you know, where we're going to end up. Um, so right now it's, you know, she's having a hard time. Um, but she generally is a, you know, is a positive person. Yeah, you mentioned that. Like, I'm wondering, are you aware of anything she does for herself that helps keep that? Uh, um, I think um, 
be, for her to be able to go out with her friends, you know, and you know, get out from from uh, you know the house, you know, which we're spending a lot of time at now with uh, COVID happening. Um, so, and, and I noticed that when she goes out with her friends, she comes back in you know, better mood. Nice. Yeah. Um, do you ever have you delved into like the philosophical or the ethereal elements of kind of questioning the universe? Why HD? Um, you know, I've uh, I just felt you know it was just. A card that I was dealt, you know, that I didn't really have a choice in the matter. So um, I never really, uh, well, I never really um, thought that, you know, why me, you know. Um, but it, it does, you know, it does come up from time to time, uh, maybe more so. Recently, now that I'm more symptomatic, I, why me? Um, but it, I just, you know, when I found out, you know, I mean, it, it was extremely depressing, of course. Um, but um, I, you know, I definitely started uh, being a more positive uh, person, trying to um, uh, work on, um, you know being able to help people, you know, um, you know, trying to help educate people as to what Huntington's disease was. I remember you used to do the yearly um, talk at, was it? Yes. UCSF. UCSF. Did you do that this past year? I did. Mm -hmm. uh, they did it via Zoom. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I do it pretty much every year, actually. They keep asking me back. Huh. And are you still involved with the Huntington's Disease Association, is it? Or what is it? The nonprofit out of Sacramento? Uh, the Huntington's Disease Society of America. Yeah. Um, I, you know, honestly, I recently I haven't been as active as I used to be. I'm not really sure why that is. Um, I've decided once we move, uh, you know, wherever we end up moving to, I want to uh, get back to helping people, you know, whether it be Huntington's disease or, you know, help or helping homeless people or whatever. Just, you know, being able to um, do something, you know, that will make me feel good. You mentioned Sacramento as a locale. You guys have you contacted the main office in Sacramento because maybe they have resources for housing. Well, my dad's actually was uh, in contact with him um, and hasn't heard back from anyone yet. So okay, so there's fishing lines out there. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. Now we go into the realm of the afterlife. <laughs> One of our close friends to you and I recently brought up that for him, he believes it's important that a person has the right to decide when their life is done. And you and I have had conversations about that, and I know that has that been coming up for you recently. Who's this person? I can't say it on the camera. Oh, oh okay, 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 okay. Um, well, yeah, um, I've, I've basically thought of, you know, at, uh, that someone should be able to, you know, in their own life, you know, especially um, when um, Huntington's gets, you know, progresses and I won't be able to, um, you know, even feed myself or, you know, be able to, be able to take care of myself. Um, you know, I, there is a part of me that, you know, definitely, you know, doesn't want to have to suffer through that. And, and I think anyone should be able to, you know, um, 
if they're in a pain point where they're in a lot of pain, they should be able to, um, you know, um, choose to attend their life. Is that a conversation that you and Charlene and you and your father have had recently for yourself? Um, no, actually, I haven't been talking about that recently. But um, it is something that, you know, you know uh, I think about every once in a while. I'm still, um, I'm still a few years away from the, from that. You know. um, but you know, it is something that you know definitely need to talk about at the time. I guess. Yeah. Did you know Phil Sheridan? He was a friend of mine. He was a storyteller and actor in Mill Valley. He used to read children's stories at the library, or does that ring a bell? No, it doesn't. Well, he passed away about a year ago now, and it was, uh, he had it set up in California, like he was able to end his life mm -hmm. when he was ready. Mm -hmm. And from talking with his wife, it was a very peaceful experience. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. And he was able to, you know, leave peacefully. Right, yeah. I think that's what we all want. Yeah, definitely. And to live peacefully, but when it comes to a point where that's no longer an option. Mm -hmm. uh, well, does anything come to mind for you that you want to talk about or? I can't think of anything.